books you can read in a day. A few suggestions for how readers can take these unusual circumstances one day and one book at a time. You might have the time but not the mental bandwidth for Anna Katarina right now and that's okay. In fact, it's completely normal. Even editors at the book review are having trouble concentrating. Maybe you want to save the thick books for a less unsettling time. If that's the case, here are a few short, quick options that you that can help take your mind off the real world. Is your family getting a little too close for comfort? Seek validation in depth department of speculation. A Jenny Offill, or you'd like to be distracted by a different crisis altogether, consider Offill's new book, whether you can guess what that one's about. We know you read The Great Gatsby in high school, but now, but, but now might be a good time to return to West Egg to lose yourself in a big party on the lawn. F. Scott Fitzgerald's classic transports you to a different era. If you are looking for short stories, meet Laurie Moore. She's an undisputed queen of the form, tackling real-life problems head-on with unflagging kindness. We recommend Birds of America, followed closely by Like Life. Ready for something longer? Consider her still fairly short novel, Who Will Run the Frog Hospital. You don't have to be a writer to find peace in Annie Dillard's The Writing Life, where she reflects on nature, creativity, friendship, and inspiration. A favorite quote to get you started. Your work is to keep cranking the flywheel that turns the gears that spin the belt in the engine of belief that keeps you and your desk in mid-air. Want a feeling of camaraderie and I am woman, hear me roar, consider we should all be feminists by Shima Manda Ngozi Edichi. You can read it in an hour and, and it should provide sufficient galvanization until the next time you're allowed to march down the street in a crowd shouting into a bullhorn. Sometimes you need to temper your anxiety with humor or sex. In Mrs. Caliban by Rachel Ingalls, Dorothy is struggling. Her son has died and so has her dog. Her husband has become dour and uncommunicative. But things begin looking up when she acquires a lover, a strapping amphibian named Larry. To say that Larry finds the middle-aged Dorothy attractive is to put it mildly, our reviewer wrote in 1986. If you have a school-aged person on the premises, chances are you are. You also have a copy of Sandra Cisner- Cisneros's The House on Mango Street. There's a reason this coming-of-age novella has earned a spot in middle school curricula across the lane. It's impossible not to root for Esperanza as she figures out who she is and how she fits into the world. You don't have to have a mouthful of braces to appreciate Cisneros' message, bloom where you're planted, and be brave. Conveniently, she conveys this in short vignettes that are easy to dip in and out of. Read about flying instead of doing it yourself by in David Zelle's Turbulence, composed in composed of ten spare thoughtful set pieces, which all take place on planes. Each chapter picks up from the last but presents a new protagonist as if a moral baton were being pressed. Or critic Dwight Garner wrote in his review that chapters come full circle. In the end, the book resembles a snake that's begun to consume its own tail. If you want to take your mind off what's happening in our world, dive into the, the very strange one at the heart of Annihilation, the first volume in Jeff Vandermeer's Southern Reach Trilogy, 
Why does the government keep sending expeditions into an exceedingly nasty place called Area X, despite the fact that almost no one has ever made it out alive? You've probably read or seen and then there were none and murder on the on the or- orient express try p- picking up an agatha christie novel you've never heard of like cat among the pigeons a sweet but stiletto sharp tale of diamonds gym class and murder set at a posh girls boarding school chronicle of a death foretold packs such a serious punch it's hard to believe it's only 128 pages we we checked in this short taught detective story gabriel garcia marquez tells the story of two young men who have undertaken a brutal murder they never wanted to commit a reviewer wrote i found chronicle of a death foretold by far the author's most absorbing work to date i read it through in a flash and it made the back of my neck prickle If you want to read about a situation that echoes the one we find ourselves in now, try making Maxwell's slim 1937 autobiographical novel, They Came Like Swallows, told from the point of view of a husband and two young sons. It follows the death of their wife and mother in the influenza pandemic of 1918. If that plot sounds too timely for comfort, Maxwell's So Long, See You Tomorrow is another slim novel with great impact.